Okay, so um, I just want to talk quickly around this whole thing about um, fear and COVID, right? Because I think a lot of people, you know, kind of talk about it, but nobody's actually explained it. And this weekend, as I was processing some information, I actually found myself getting upset, um, you know, just at some people in my life and figured, right, let's talk about it then. So here's the thing. As a believer... I come to the table and I say, okay, I believe that my life is in God's hands, that um, my days are numbered. So when I'm born, he already knows when I'm going to be taken from this earth. And um, I've got the free, I've got the, I've got, obviously I've got the freedom to decide how I live this life, um, you know, until I die. Then COVID hits, right? And the, the reality of COVID, okay, is that it is a disease or a virus or whatever you call it um it's going like it's it's going to spread you know people are going to be infected people are going to recover from that infection um some people are going to die from the infection but here's the thing that i think got me upset as i kind of pondered over what happened this weekend as a believer if i believe that my days are planned by the lord okay if somebody I know gets infected with COVID, or even those that I don't know, right, and they pass away, then my belief is that that was their time to go. Like, their number was called. Heaven isn't sitting there in a panic of like, oh my gosh, guys, this COVID thing, how are we going to deal with this now? Oh, there, this person passed away. Oh, is, the, you know, is home ready for them in heaven yet? What do we do? Like, heaven, heaven understood that, okay, like, heaven knew, you know, that, Okay, COVID is going to come. Some people are going to be called home or some people are going to go to hell um, as a result of dying of COVID, right? So, and I think that's the thing is we, 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 we understand it when it comes to, uh, okay, oh, somebody had a heart attack, they passed away. Oh, it was their time to go. Somebody was in an unexpected car accident or a sudden car accident. Oh, it was their time to go. Um, somebody was stabbed to death. Or murdered or you know somebody committed suicide it was it whatever it is right um so we understand it but when it comes to COVID, then suddenly um it's like all that stuff flies out the window and we've allowed um this spirit of anxiety and worry and all those things to come in and like i really need you to hear me right because i'm not saying that we shouldn't give the situation the respect it deserves right even if someone, let's just use heart attack, right? Even when somebody dies of a heart attack, okay? We believe it was a time to go, yes. But there's still mourning. There's still pain in the death. There's still um, the process, let's say maybe before heart attack, where the doctors are saying to you, listen, your cholesterol is high, or I don't, I don't know what causes a heart attack, okay? So I don't know. But, you know, so you need to exercise, you need to do this, you need to do that. So there's still a process that we, that we, we take to say, okay, cool, you know, we, we're, we're working because we want to live long, healthy lives, right? But when that person then passes away, then part of our mourning is to say, okay, you know, is to comfort ourselves in knowing that, okay, you know, yes, they were still really young, but God knew that, you know, this is the amount of days that we had with them on earth. This is where they currently are. And this is, you know, and their number was called, if I can just use that phrase. Um, so... We understand it when it comes to that and and when we allow this fear and this anxiety to almost suffocate us in this time, we're actually stepping back and saying, okay, none of that is applicable anymore. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of just feel like I want to remind you, you know, um, I mean, one of the things that I really do, like my, my, my sister and I, when she went into the COVID ICU, you know, a lot of the conversations we were having then was, look, dog, you need to... <laughs> I mean, you know, this is your job. It's, it's work, so you're going to go to work. If you get infected, you get all, then you're going to get infected, you know. We still, like, we, we, we are still, our, our, our roots, our base is still in the fact that God knows. You know what I mean? I think on the one hand, I get so upset because they're constantly pumping out the number of people that are getting infected without reminding people that, guys, you've got over 90% recovery that's happening, happening here. You know what I mean? Like, yes, people are getting infected. A lot of people are getting infected. But a lot of people are recovering. This thing isn't here to, like, wipe out the nation or the world, you know? 
Um, and as I say that, I, I see in people's faces that they get so frustrated because they think, Katie, you're being so disrespectful or you're just disregarding. And I'm really not. I do. I understand. If you leave the house, please wear a mask. Like, there's, don't leave the house if you can. You know what I mean? Don't, um, you know, like don't people whose immune systems are compromised or is, whose health is compromised like be cautious of those people all those things that it's part of how we show that we love people you know so i'm not saying that we shouldn't take note and do the things that we need to do to get um you know to get ourselves to a point of you know where, where we know that okay i'm doing what i can to help stop the spread of this thing but i'm just saying doing what i can doesn't it's not the same thing as walking this journey in anxiety and in fear you know like just take a step back breathe especially as a jesus follower guys as as a believer so like there's so much peace in me because i understand that jesus is peace you know he when he leaves he says guys i'm leaving you peace not peace like you know it peace like i know it you know then you go into i mean you go into the bible and you go dig and it's it's um for, for for the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to to kind of to 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 transform you and to and to live and to reside in you, the Bible is saying you need to trust in the Lord. So trust him, trust him that he knows um your days, that your that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, you know, because people just like throwing all these scriptures out there so much, and I'm like, hey, this is the time. You know, this is it's the steps of the, the righteous are ordered by the Lord. It's not just for the journey it took you to get to your promotion. You know, it's for now. It's for when something is happening in the world, people are going crazy. People are in living in so much anxiety. Don't touch me. Oh, this person coughed, this person sneezed. Why are you blowing your nose? It's winter, guys. The change in season anyway brings flu. Now somebody is blowing their nose and suddenly and anxiety is going to grip your heart like choose to let it go choose to hold on to peace you know what i mean trust god he knows what he's doing this corona thing it hasn't shocked heaven heaven isn't in an uproar all of a sudden because now extra people are dying you know he knew that okay you know on whatever date you know this is the date that this person is going to come home this is the date that i then lose this person to the kingdom of darkness this he he knows these things and if we don't if we're not choosing to embrace peace if we're not choosing to live lives conscious of the fact that god is in control that we trust him that we that we under we we, we trust in his understanding even though that sometimes mean that we're left in mystery you know or in confusion it's not in confusion in mystery um but yeah like i just there's 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 so many people that i look at and that i talk to and when 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 they present where they are and i ask how are you doing I don't see a difference in how they're living, yet they call themselves Jesus followers or believers. You know what I mean? And I'm like, yo, I mean, this is an amazing time for believers to show how different we approach life. You know, the world is in panic, guys. The world is in panic. And I, I really, I'm not afraid to say, I, there is no, nothing about this thing panics me. Nothing. When I need to go to the store, when I need to, I will happily do it because I understand that, okay, you know, this is where we are, but this is who God is. And this is what it means to me that God is real, that God is alive, you know, that he's, he's part of how I, I, I live and breathe and move and have my being. Like there's, there's a physical manifestation that happens when there's a belief inside of you, you know? And as a believer, I really want to challenge you, yo. Let go of the anxiety. Let go of the fear. And just turn your eyes back to Jesus. Really, because I don't, you know, when people are like, okay. Like, even now, I'm saying, look, the answer lies in trusting in Jesus. Then you're like, oh, how do you trust in Jesus? Guys, if you don't give him an opportunity to come through for you, I mean, you will never know. You will never know that you can trust him. You know what I mean? Just like those things where people say, you know, if you've never been sick, you'll never know him as a healer. If you've never been in need, you'll never know him as a provider. It's exactly the same thing here where he's saying, yo, trust me. Just turn your eyes to you. Instead of focusing on all these other things that are happening, how about you just come back, come back to the feet of Jesus. 
You know what I mean? Place yourself there again and then take it from there. Because he will change your perspective. He will give you the peace. He, all, all of it is rooted in him. And if we continue to separate ourselves from him by choosing to submit to the forces of the kingdom of darkness. I mean, what else do you expect? Of course, you're going to find yourself in, this, in a state of fear. Of course, you're going to find yourself fighting anxiety. Like, and I, I really, I'm going to say it again. I know I've said it, but I'm really going to say it again living as if living with the understanding of who god is and what his kingdom means you know and what it means for me as a believer on this earth it looks different than living as if i'm not part of that kingdom you know and <laughs> sure it, it doesn't mean disrespecting what needs to happen in the physical manifestations it doesn't mean if somebody i know passes away the morning is not going to be there. It does, you know what I mean? Even if... For, okay, here's an example. Actually, a really nice example. I hate needles, okay? I Sometimes I'm just like, Lord, nothing ever... I, I really... I have to be in a place where I never need needles. Because if I'm conscious and I need a needle, I think I would rather choose to just be in the pain than have the needle. So, if I... When I go to, to the, the blood labs, right? I know that they're going to stick a needle in my arm because they need to draw my blood because of my health issues right so i know that i can prepare for that i can do everything that i want when they stick that needle in it's still sore you know what i mean it doesn't just because i i was expecting it it doesn't mean when it actually happens it's going to suddenly not be sore it's still going to be sore when somebody you know falls really sick and they're in hospital and you can see that they are on death's door and they're going to pass away right you you prepare your heart for it and all this stuff whatever but when they pass it's still painful. There's still mourning. There's still, you know, and so all of those things are still there. I'm not saying those things disappear. I'm just saying where we are now, while we are still alive and kicking, there are things that should look different because we are believers. There are feelings, there are emotions, there are powers and principalities that we should not be submitting to, that we should be submitting to, because we are different because and the difference is jesus christ like dear god please i i really i'm you know i this weekend my heart broke because i i realized how many people in my life are actually suffocated by anxiety around this thing and i just thought guys where, where is the evidence that you are a believer if this is how you are reacting, if this is how you are responding, where is the evidence that you are a believer? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, let me know. I'm really, I'm very open to chat about this and I would love to chat about it. Um, especially if you find yourself on the, on the other side of it. But I just, yeah. That going into this week, yo, choose daily, every minute of every day. Choose peace. Choose peace, guys. Rather take peace. Nothing is worth your peace. Nothing is worth your peace. And whatever Satan wants to bring, yo. Like if, if you really believe that God is in control and God's got it, then act like it. Act like it. Yes, we'll stumble and fall and all this stuff or whatever. But pull people alongside you to help keep you accountable. Don't submit to the anxiety and the fear and the worry of all these things that are happening. It's just, yeah. I mean, there's been some amazing stuff that's happened to me during this lockdown period. And maybe one day I'll share it. But i re honestly guys i i i, I want to encourage you lord help us to choose peace help us to hold on to peace to not let go of 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 the principles and the values of the kingdom of light we we refuse to swap them out for whatever the darkness is trying to give us just help us hold on tight to you jesus to you and your plan and your purpose for our lives in jesus name i pray amen have a good one yo